God is an on time God. It's an on time God. Yes, he is. It might not come when we want him, but Lord knows he's right on time. I want you to join in with us as we attempt to sing on time God. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. He'll be there right on time. 
Please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. St. Matthews, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Mm. First, giving honor to God, my mother and her absence, to all our Christian friends and saints. It, it brings me up a pleasure to come before you this morning in the absence of my mother. Thank you all for the prayers that have gone up. 
Uh, she's dealing with a, my aunt Asbury, who's 96 years of age, uh, who's dealing with a severe case of pneumonia as well as congestive heart failure. And uh, Aunt Asbury didn't have any children, and my mother became somewhat of her daughter. And uh, she somewhat helped raise my mother, and uh, they're really, really close. If you wonder why my mother's an AKA, as I told the morning service, it's because of my Aunt Asbury. She, no offense to the Deltas and Zetas, they're fine sororities too, but she wouldn't, she refused to let my mother be anything else but an AKA. <laughs> But this morning has been a, a wonderful experience for me. Uh, I, I, was, I was greeted out in the parking lot. Um, I sat in Ms. Joanne's uh, Sunday school class this morning, learned an awesome lesson. The class participation was just awesome. Great experience. Of course, the liturgist, Ms. Brown and Ms. Ms. McGirt have been nothing but wonderful, uh, holding my hand and guiding me through this. Um, and then to hear on time God and then don't do it without me. I thought I was back at home. And then I saw my lovely wife sitting here who's always by my side. Uh, that's my cheerleader, my coach, my teacher. I'm still in school <laughs> working on my teacher certification. And uh, my wife's done a lot of online courses and uh, she's kind of guided me through that process. Uh, I get home a lot late at night and uh, you know she's right there ready. You can't go to bed until you get this work done. So. <laughs> Um, nonetheless, thank you so much, sweetheart, for coming and being by my side. This morning, as we celebrate Human Relations Day, I want to speak to you all about stepping out of yourself. We find ourselves somewhat as humans of falling into a comfort zone. Uh, you know, I don't want to sweat, you know, so we wear degree and other roll-ons and antiperspirants. I don't want to work too hard and get calluses, so we wear gloves. Uh, I've got certain steel toe shoes. I don't want to hurt my feet, and I don't want to overexert myself or do something that's somewhat uncomfortable. Uh, Dr. King and so many other civil rights leaders and leaders of today, to include President Obama, have to step out of that comfort zone, do the impossible, and do the things that others say, man, I can't believe he did that or made that decision or she, she did this. But stepping out of yourself, of doing something different this day as we celebrate Human Relations Day, I can imagine the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., when he was coming up not only with a speech, but for each sermon and for each tribulation that he had to face of even sitting in jail and being beaten, and, and not only him, but other leavers, Mega Evers and so many others, when they had to endure these hardships, how they had to step out of themselves. It's not about me. It's about my grandchildren and the children that aren't even born yet and others that will come behind me to endure or to enjoy the luxuries of this land that we call America. There are two days woven together in the Dr. King's desire for belief in the beloved community, which should challenge each and every one of us to make serving others a part of our everyday life. We must share our gifts with one another as we embark upon what the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. did and this holiday as we share on his birthday on tomorrow. I can't help but to recall a few biblical stories of those who shared their gifts with others. Christ gave his life for all humanity. The young lad with the fish and loaves of bread gave up his lunch that his mother prepared for him to eat, but yet he shared it with Jesus and Jesus fed 5,000. The Samaritan who helped the beat man on the side of the road. Boaz, who, who eventually allowed Ruth to glean from his fields, the three wise men, and so many others. And Dr. King, a man who was full of so many gifts, spiritual insight, his style, his swagger, his charisma, his eloquent speech, his memory, his leadership, his love, his commitment, his perseverance, his patience and tolerance, and willing to fight for others. We have all these things that we could, we could conjure up and we love to do and the goals we would like to accomplish. I could imagine it's embarking upon a new year. This is the third week of a new year, and some of us had goals to either lose weight, gain weight, get married, get unmarried, whatever the case may be. And you set all these goals, and here it is, the third week of January, and some of us have fallen short of those goals already. But nonetheless, we try to fulfill these obligations for ourselves, and how often we pause to say, who am I bringing along with me? Some of the things that we, we 
accomplished in 2014 or did not accomplish in 2014, we carried him over with us in this brand new year. Some of our bad habits, some of our good habits, some of the things that we decided that we wanted to give up, for some odd reason, we're doing it again. But God still loves us. Sure, I understand the concept that we can't help everybody, but this is something that needs to be practiced more often. There are so many ways that we can help someone, even if it's nothing but letting them know that God loves them. This morning, as I sat in the Sunday school class, and Ms. Joanne and Ernest and others that were sitting in the class talked about just a smile, a high five. You got to be careful hugging kids now if you work in an educational environment, because that can be, you know, on something, you know, a little on the wrong side. So you can high five or say, good to see you, John, and good morning, Mary. How's your mom doing? You know, all these little things. But how about the homeless person that you see on the street every time you travel to the store or your favorite restaurant? Has it ever crossed your mind that the reason you're seeing them this often is because you should be helping them? The Bible lets us know that we entertain angels unaware. In fact, let me go deeper. If I can recall, I'm pretty sure that God sent his only begotten son to die for you and I. This suggests to me that if we want to model what God did for us, we need to step out of our comfort zones and help someone else. If you notice, the world is getting worse, and believe it or not, the Bible is the only fulfilling itself. Read 2 Timothy in, in 3. But that's why you and I should thank Jesus, because we don't have to be like the world. The second we, ex, uh, the second we accepted Jesus, we became new. In fact, old things are passed away. What God wants from us is to duplicate what he did for us. Let me say that again for those that might have been a little sleepy, because I, I was up late last night too, watching ESPN, and uh, my wife and I watched the Bobby Brown Whitney Houston story on Lifetime. Brothers, I'm not a Lifetime fan, but last night, Captain said I had to watch Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown, and so I watched it. I enjoyed it, too. I enjoyed it. But what God wants from us is to duplicate what he did for us, and that's to love one another. That's, that's that, you know, it's four, four letters in the word love, L-O-V-E, I'm right. And that's hard to do sometimes. It's hard to love somebody, especially those that have hurt you. And it's hard to love somebody unconditionally because as humans, you know, we sometimes fall short of God's glory and we let self get in the way. But that's why I'm saying this morning, step out of self. Dr. King could have been selfish. Other great leaders could have been selfish and said, you know what, forget them. I'm about myself. Jesus could have been selfish. He was God's only begotten son who had all power and could have refused when he hung on the cross. Now, I know it was pain for him, for him to come and do this for us, but he did. Now, the problem is we haven't stepped into that place where we can love in spite of. Allow me to go deeper. And yes, I understand and no disrespect for brothers and sisters who fell short for whatever reason. My question is to you, who or how many will grab his or her hand and say, brother or sister, I still love you? Didn't Jesus do that for us? While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I can go even deeper. Maybe even left the church and went back into the world. And people look at them with some, they used to be an usher. They used to be in the choir. But look at them now. They back out on the streets. We still got to love them, church, in spite of their shortcomings, because we're not perfect either. Now, the people out there in the world will show a surface love while you're partying and living it up, and sometimes more than those that are in their family and also in the church household. Touch the closest one and look at them in the eyes and say, get out of yourself. Never look down on anybody unless you're picking them up because when your test time come, there's nobody there. My grandmother used to say, to, say something, um, be careful how you treat people, son, because on your way up, surely those will be the same people you see on your way down. And that is so true. And that's why it's always be careful to safeguard and be kind to one another. Show love, even when you feel like nobody's loving you or they mistook something you said was wrong. Now, when Jesus was on the earth, notice everywhere he went, he helped people, even when he was in a hurry. I could imagine Jesus had other things to do, but when they ran out of wine, what did he do? He figured out a way to just bring me some jugs and squeeze some grapes and made some of the best Chardonnay or whatever kind of rosé, and they had a good time at that, at that wedding, I was told. But he stopped and healed people. I mean, even when he was in a hurry, I, I, I got I to gotta go somewhere. I, I'm in a hurry. You know, he didn't have a watch on or a Rolex. 
He didn't have a cell phone and received a phone call, so he wasn't in no real, real hurry, but I could imagine he, had, he was about his father's business. But yet he took the time, and God doesn't operate in time, but he took the time to heal the sick and afflicted and to remove demons and, and to help those who couldn't help themselves, and he had a kind word for those, and I could imagine a woman with the issue of blood, what if he was in a hurry? That story could be quite different. What if the man who was blind and the, the demon possessed, it could be quite different, but he took the time. Now, that's love, y'all. Time, love. Young folks, sit at the foot of your grandparents and your aunts and uncles and ask them how it was when they grew up so they could share that love and the story of how they didn't have a lot of things that we have today, especially this internet and television that's teaching most of our children. Understand that whatever you sow, you shall reap. And if you show compassion, you'll reap compassion. If you show forgiveness, you'll, sow, you'll reap forgiveness. And I have to be honest with you. Don't think the devil's going to let you always receive from forgiveness from someone because it doesn't work that way. As we learned this morning in Sunday school, he's out to seek and devour and see what he can destroy. Nothing worth fighting for comes easy. I'm reminded as Olympians and other great athletes endure the tough practices and training long before their competition, which might last just merely seconds compared to the hours they had to push themselves through the extreme pain. That these athletes have to push themselves beyond what they would normally want to do. That's one reason why stepping out of yourself can be challenging because the rewards that come after it, we must allow God to process us so we not only hear his voice, but move in what he wants us to do. And so I challenge, you, challenge all of you this week, and not only this week, but this year, to be led by the Spirit of God so that somebody that comes across your path, you take the time to help them. That's what, when you go tomorrow to the parade and see the a and band and Dudley's band, and I'm sure Smith might jump out there too and a couple others, but when you see the parade, grab a young folk's hand and reflect on how somebody stepped out on faith and took the time to make this day possible by giving up his life no different than Jesus who gave up his life and died for us. That you have to step out of yourself. And as we go to these different functions on tomorrow evening, uh, the breakfasts and all these things that recognize Dr. King for what a great man he was. I'm always reminded of he stepped out of himself and did something when he could have been selfish. And I want you all to experience this and share it with others as well. Let's celebrate Human Relations Day by being doers and not just listeners of what God is asking each and every one of us. This week, and you go back to work on Tuesday or if it's on Monday, go to that coworker and say, you know what, I love you. I don't mean nothing funny by it, but I love you. Well, why do you love me, Ronnie? Because you are created in God's image. You're black, you're white, you're green, you're yellow, you're Hispanic, you're Asian, you're Cambodian, whatever the case may be, God made a multi diversified people so that we can understand one another. God is bigger than just what we see every day. God's in Japan. He's in the desert. He's in the jungle of Vietnam. He's in Alaska where the polar bears roam. He's also in the hood, in the projects, and he's also in the country club. That's the type of God that we serve. He has no respect to person. But I am proud today to say that on this Human Relations Day, step out of yourself and do something for someone else this week and this year and let God use you. God bless you.